Visit thehonestcarpenter.com and get your home-related questions answered by a trade expert. Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with thehonestcarpenter.com and Honest Carpenter Consulting. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix or replace rotted portions of door jams like this one. What's happened here is that the bottom of the jam has basically sucked up water off of the threshold. And the jams of these pre-hung, prefabricated doors are uh, almost always made of pine. That's very porous material uh, and it's not appropriate for contact with a wet surface. I don't know why they don't seal the end grains of these prefabricated doors, but they never do. And so you see this happen over and over again on exterior doors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out a controlled portion of the lower part of this jam and I'm gonna replace it with treated wood that's uh, fashioned into a shape that will fit right in here and it will also be able to hold the weather stripping. It's kind of tricky, but I'll show you how to do that gone ahead and pulled the weather stripping out here to start and measured up about 16 inches and I used a combination square to mark a good perpendicular line across the face it's perfectly straight that way um, and what I'm going to do is cut right at this control line with a multi oscillating tool if you're wondering what a multi oscillating tool is it's this thing right here it's a great tool for making plunge cuts on the trim in a house I wrote a whole article on it I'll link it in the description below um, but basically it just lets you make very controlled smooth cuts and straight lines uh, straight into material so here you can see I've already begun a notch that's the hardest part um, you just kind of want to hold thing like a telescope and pass it very slowly uh, across that control line that you made for yourself and I could probably demonstrate uh, further cutting the material like right now So I made my cut all the way through. It's okay if you go just a little bit overboard. Caulk is gonna hide that, and this is actually gonna be behind the weather stripping. Same, you just don't wanna go too far over into the brick mold. Uh, after that, I've gone ahead with a knife and scored a clean line between the brick mold and the jam all the way down to the threshold. And um, what I'm gonna do now is gonna begin to break or crack this whole part out, even the parts that are good. I'll probably try to split it right up the middle, and I wanna get this removed. I'm not gonna take out this part of the jam that's holding the hinge. This rarely rots because it sits sort of inside. I've, I've basically never seen it rot on one of these rotted doors. We're just gonna take out the portion that tends to rot, which is the outward facing exterior portion, and I'm probably gonna to have to break it out using a little bit of force, a hammer, and a big screwdriver. Here's what I mean by a big screwdriver. We call it a demolition screwdriver. They're great for banging it into a piece of wood and using leverage to break up pieces out. I'm gonna have to do this pretty slowly, but you can see the amount of moisture that's in this bottom area. Fortunately, the wood they use is finger jointed, so it actually comes apart pretty easily. It's put together with these tiny sections. Uh, I'm just gonna have to get a line coming all the way up to our control cut and just very carefully pry things out. Don't mess up the brick mold and don't mess up the good part of the jam if you can avoid it. Here you can see I'm actually starting to crack out pieces of the, the full lower jam now. <clears throat> Got a big hole here at the bottom. I can feel the house wrap behind it. I'm just gonna keep working it. It wants to form a split right here. I'm not gonna let that happen. I'm gonna take it off little piece by little piece, working my way over until I get to the thinner area where these two parts are connected and I'll probably be able to just carefully like cut that with a knife or a chisel more cleanly. Just go slowly when you're doing this and you'll be able to get this big piece taken out little bits at a time. Really, it doesn't take that long, maybe 15 minutes. There, I finally got to the bottom of it. Um, just pull out that last piece. I'm just gonna clean up this edge of the inner part of the jam just a bit and also just make sure I got a really good flat surface up here, but that's it. You can see the house wraps in pretty good shape. That's what we wanna see. This is tar paper that uh, kinda acts as a light vapor barrier between the house and everything outside the house. And uh, yeah, just do a little bit more cleanup, but this is what you should see when you get to the bottom of it. Sweep all that away and you got your threshold right there in this hollow space. So this part's a little tricky to explain, but I'll give it a shot. The reason I cut these diamond patterns out is because the material that I'm replacing with is not as thick as the actual jam. The actual jam's one and a quarter. We're gonna use really dry treated deck board, which is only one inch thick. Um, so I'm gonna need to add quarter inch shims uh, behind it to make sure that our depth is getting set correctly. And to do that, I'm gonna need to make sure the shims are adhesived to uh, rough opening framing in there. 
uh, hence the little window in the in our diamond cuts and then I can adhesive and shoot our replacement piece to those shims. This thing's not gonna be really inclined to move, um, but that should give it all the bearing it needs directly back to actual framing. And we can just do that using shims and a good interior exterior construction adhesive like this. I went ahead and ripped our deck board to width, which is about four and seven sixteenths. Uh, and I also put a five degree miter cut on the bottom because that's the pitch of most thresholds. Window sills tend to be 15 degrees, thresholds tend to be about 5 degrees. So I went ahead and put that cut on the bottom, cut it to width. Now I have a slightly more complicated cut to make here because we need a little groove or slot or dado in the front of this thing to accept the weather stripping, which needs about an eighth inch gap to slide into. So what I'm going to do now is create that groove on the inner cheek of our replacement piece here and really I just want a little tongue on the end that's as wide as this one which is about a quarter inch uh, so I'm just going to fashion that on the table saw it doesn't really matter how far back this groove goes a little further is better because it'll, it'll clear room for the the inner tenon or tongue or whatever of the jam that we left but we just need a piece it's cut to the right shape to kind of clamshell in here, but still leave a groove on the inside. That's what makes this repair complicated, but it's not that bad. And I think when you see my replacement piece, it'll make a bit more sense. Here, this gives you a better idea of what I was describing there. We cut this kind of big rabbit in here. And again, this is gonna be the edge that points inward toward the house. And our weather stripping is actually gonna sit right here. And the way I did that is I just did one rip leaving about three h which is the size of that little tongue and then i actually just what i like to do is set the blade depth by eye for that next one and i make a pass that cuts out the excess material without cutting any higher up into our little three eighths tongue uh, and i just run it all the way through and you get a nice long rabbit like that and i left my little five degree cut i always always make a note of it so I know where it is in relation to the tongue that I just cut. So now I can cut this thing to precise length at the top, about 16 inches, and uh, make the shims and I'll almost be ready to install. Here's our test fit. Looks good. Sits right back in the slot. And here you can see the little gap where we still need to bring it out flush. So that lets me know that my shims need to be right about a quarter inch, just like I thought. Shims are cut. I'm ready for the test fit. To make this easier for yourself, just put one little dab of glue on the back of your piece and take the shim, press it on, and then the shim will stay in place when you set the piece into place. And that feels good and flush. I can tell that quarter inch shim's just right. There's gonna be a little room for adjustment, but that ought to work. So now I can take this back out and I will put my shims adhesive into the diamonds to go ahead and cover up this space where I made a little gap in the vapor barrier. The last thing I want to do before I install is go ahead and soften these edges that are going to be visible. Um, on the door itself, it has just like a little tiny eighth inch rounder or something. You can replicate that with some sanding paper or a sanding block. So just gently run up and down this sharp edge and uh, that'll just kind of ease that outside corner. I got the edges softened on my piece there. Now I'm basically ready to install. So I'm just going to run a bunch of adhesives on my shim pieces. Uh, just like this more than I'm showing now and then I'm gonna run some on the underside of the continuous piece up the jam and even a, maybe just a little bit on the back side of my brick mold right here you, you really shouldn't be afraid to kind of really fill in this area with adhesive and even a little bit on the back of the piece and then I'll just take my replacement piece ease it into place here and I will shoot it on with two inch brad nails. Replace my piece of shot on. Just really maybe four brad nails carefully placed and then I kind of tap and pull and pry the thing until it's right where I want it and then I'm not going to mess with it that much. I'm going to let the adhesive set up but you can see how well aligned it is just by siding down the faces in the inside corner. That looks really good. I used 
Should have mentioned this in the beginning. I use shop dry treated lumber in this case. This lumber has been sitting inside. It had time to dry out. So I'll be able to caulk and paint this pretty much right away. Uh, and I will just use the paint that the client supplies to match this kind of cream color. But uh, once this has time to dry up, it'll be good, but it's really probably not gonna wanna go anywhere in the meantime. Everything's nice and flush. And so we're almost done. There we are, caulked up, ready for paint after it dries just a little bit. I brought the weather stripping right down. Went right into the little groove rabbit that we made. Um, you're always gonna see a little surgical scar on these things. It's not a big deal. The paint's really gonna help cover it up. Uh, even some caulking, just a little bit of sanding can almost make it vanish altogether. But that's looking good. And the last little tip I will leave you with is this side never rotted, but it's made of the same material and so it could. So to prevent any rot, what I like to do is take the oscillating multi-tool, run it very carefully underneath the bottom jam, cut out maybe just like eighth of an inch or something. And I'm gonna run some just silicone in there that will prevent the lower grain from this jam on the other side ever soaking it up and you won't have to do this repair but if you do that is how you do a lower jam repair repair with treated material and uh, for more tips and articles check out thehonestcarpenter.com please hit like and subscribe below thanks for watching the video we're now offering live video consultations and phone consultations to homeowners nationwide to get your most important home related questions answered by a trade expert just visit thehonestcarpenter.com